it's here it's here it's here finally the xperia one mark IV is here in probably one of the thinnest packages for a smartphone ever at least that i tested so i will do an unboxing and first look so let's get started The unboxing is pretty fast and easy. There's just nothing in the box besides the phone itself and a nice plastic no, paper wrap because they don't have any plastic in here. This is Xperia 1 Mark IV in the wide edition. If you want to see the full unboxing, I made a YouTube short because it's just under one minute. Uh, anyway, we have the buttons here, uh, very matte uh, frame, which is pretty nice, feels solid. It feels a bit more edgy, <laughs> a bit more yeah, the corners are a little bit harsher than on the One Mark III for sure. So you can feel it looks, it feels a little bit more like an iPhone here, this side with not a rounded corner. And even here, this kind of change to the back glass is a little bit, yeah, more, there's a bit more an edge to it than, than round. So it's not rounded so, mu so much as it was on the older phones. Otherwise, we have the volume rocker. We have the power button with fingerprint scanner and this is working fine in my first um, experience i can tell you it's working fine the only thing that you have to get accustomed to is the brand new yeah vibration motor because instead of like this harsh vibrating like whoop, when you unlock it this is like a little soft ping only to unlock it which is like a bit of a difference but you can get used to it and it's definitely a better vibration motor than on the previous models otherwise we have one button less the google assistant button is gone we have a normal shutter button here normal for uh, sony it is the same kind of type a little bit bigger maybe than on the one mark three but not the feather like shutter button that i have on my one on my xperia pro i that i'm recording here with which has like a feather one there you have to like really for yeah, a little bit harder to get the first to the first stage you can show you this so let's go here and i cannot just touch it for focusing i have to press to focus you can see like the elements are and it's it can use the focus indicator as well. So this is a, a big difference here already. Uh, otherwise, from the device itself, we have now the uh, option for the SIM card on the bottom. So here you can place your SIM card like I have here, or you can place a micro SD card, I think up to two terabytes or something. A new company just presented 1.5 terabytes, so you can really upgrade your memory here. And you can take it out, as you can see here, without any issues. And for those people who are wondering, does it reboot? No, it doesn't reboot. It just asks for your SIM pin, and that's basically it. Um, when it comes to other things, we have USB Type-C. I think it's 3.1 or 3.2. Uh, very fast and no issues with this. You have display out with this as well. And uh, on the other side, we have the three and a half millimeter headphone jack, another microphone, and then we have the camera bump on the back, NFC logo, some CE stuff for Europe. And uh, yeah, the cameras itself, you can see we have the same layout of the cameras as on the One Mark III, periscope zoom on the bottom, time of flight sensor, the flash, which is still a very weak flash. I think this is the main sensor and this is the ultra wide angle. And then we have, ah, this is the flash, I think. <laughs> And this is just a time of flight sensor or some color sensor i don't know uh anyway and then here on this side nothing so the sim slot is not here anymore it is really there on the bottom then we have let's turn on the display we have slightly slightly thinner bezels than on the one mark three i would say but still we have a chin and we have a head here where we have the speaker that you can use for, for calling definitely but it's also used as a secondary yeah, uh, speaker for listening to music and so on and we have another speaker here which is when you really really look very very cl up closely i'm not sure if you can see this it's slightly raised here towards the bottom so basically it's like a down firing one that is like firing now here because they have like some kind of pipe system that pipes it out in this way and this is why you see maybe it's a bit i'm not sure if you can see it really but it's going a little bit down here and then it's going up like the mesh here of the speakers going up here into this direction uh direction which uh yeah is a bit unusual but it's the same design as on the one mark three basically uh, the speakers i can tell you are louder 
uh, more fuller, more bassy, which is pretty, pretty likable, I would say. Um, there are some better speakers uh, on the market for sure, but this is a very good speaker already. And uh, I really like watching movies on this one, especially on this beautiful screen that uh, you cannot see here right now because I have to insert the pin. But uh, after insert inserting the pin, you have this nice animation that you can see here on unlocking. And we have, of course, uh, all the glory of Android 12. But we have some new applications on top that we get here with this special edition, the One Mark IV Music Pro app that I will do a dedicated video on it. Cinema Pro, Video Pro, we all know, Photo Pro as well. But under streaming, we also have a new app called Bravia Core, which can stream 4K HDR videos from Sony. And I used this app already for streaming some nice Sony movies that you can stream for free, I think, for a limited amount of time, <laughs> definitely. Not sure why it's not showing anything it's loading now and uh, then you have lots and lots of sony movies here that you can watch uh, jared lethos morbius is what i watched here very very cool it even looks better on this small tiny little screen than on my television screen which doesn't doesn't have oled it's just a qled but this one here with oled 4k hdr just looks phenomenal and you have like lots of lots of other movies that you can watch here that are pretty cool and yeah i really really like this so uh, this alone makes this purchase worthwhile i would say otherwise i have all my apps here installed everything is working fine overheating issues yes i had overheating issues here with this device not on the first initial setup of all these apps and so on because i was on the january patch and i think the january patch did not suffer from these issues at least i didn't get any overheating warning or screen dimming or even uh, dropping down to 60 hertz which after the May update, I immediately noticed that it happened. And yeah, this is something that is a little bit of a bugger, but right now it's not overheating. It will give you the overheating message pretty soon, as soon as you start recording video with the Video Pro app. And this is, I think, a good time now to switch to the Video Pro app. And I'll give you some samples of the front-facing camera because we have now front-facing camera glorious on in Video Pro and we can do even HDR. So let's get some uh, video samples rolling. So I'm recording now here with the front-facing camera of the Xperia 1 Mark IV. 12 megapixels, a brand new sensor, 4K 30 frames per second. Recording in the Video Pro app. Yes, the Video Pro app now has the ability to record also from the selfie cam in 4K 30 frames per second. It is not high dynamic range, but standard dynamic range here. I also have a high dynamic range option, but I will upload high dynamic range footage of the front-facing camera as well as of the back-facing cameras on my channel so you can check it out under the Sony playlist and uh, yeah th this is where you can find it if you are interested in this otherwise this is pretty cool and now I'm walking a little bit in a darker scene is it adjusting everything let's go out here and uh, yeah I cannot switch to automatic or can I need to switch to automatic I think it is switched to automatic right now, so I cannot switch to the uh, to the manual mode in the when or during recording on the front-facing camera. Let's check out the back-facing camera. Uh, this is now the main back camera on the Xperia One Mark IV, and this one has also 12 megapixels. It's a slightly updated sensor from the one that we had before, I think, on the One Mark III and the, the One Mark II but still 12 megapixels, still one over 1.7 inch size sensor, so you get this nice background blur, but not too much, just like on the Xperia Pro I or the uh, Honor Magic 4 Ultimate or other very large sensor uh, smartphone cameras. But the cool new thing about this one is I can zoom out during recording right now, currently using the Video Pro app, stabilization enabled, 4K 30 frames per second, and let me show you. I can zoom out to 16 millimeters. Now the ultra wide angle 
4K 30 frames per second which is pretty cool and nice and I also have the ability to zoom in if I want to which is also a very nice addition so uh, let me show you this right now I walk a little bit faster show you a nice little car that I see there as you can see here there this Porsche and uh, now I can zoom in seamlessly this is 24 this is 50 this is 70 this is 137 and I think it's looking good I can zoom in up to this is now 375 millimeters and you can see the Porsche logo there on the tire and I can go back to yeah what is it here roughly 79 and uh, I think 85 now it is switching to the dedicated periscope zoom lens which has this nice optical zoom feature where I can zoom in to 125 which we have reached now so this is working pretty nicely and I can zoom out again I can also click and then directly choose what I want to zoom in so I have the option to not only slide around but also the option to click and then to choose the photo length that I want to switch to and it automatically zooms in during recording which is pretty pretty awesome I would say and I will show you and we'll do a dedicated video about the video pro app and the photo pro app and what kind of changes I uh, see there in comparison to the Xperia 1 Mark III they will be coming in comparison with the One Mark III as well. You probably saw the uh, video where I unboxed uh, the style cover for the Xperia One Mark IV already. It's a different style cover than the one on the One Mark III because the dimensions are slightly different and the camera bump is a little bit differently positioned on the One Mark IV. So you cannot use, technically maybe you could use the One Mark III cover, but it's not fitting 100%. So this is why. Um, yeah, I did an unboxing of the One Mark IV's cover as well. And yeah, what do you think about the video quality here so far? 4K 30 frames per second. I don't remember that I switched in the Video Pro app to 4K, so I think it is the default setting right now. Unlike on the One Mark III, where I think 1080p was the default setting. But uh, don't name me on it. I don't know for sure. But this is everything for this little short camera. A sample what do you think about this one here and there will be coming a very long extended camera review as well as all the other things so be excited for the one mark four content on my channel so my first impressions with the xperia one mark four are pretty good the only downside is the overheating that i experienced when we have like 30 over 30 degrees celsius here outside and you're running around in the sun that it definitely shows you the overheating issue and uh, the overheating warning and this could even happen when normal browsing or so and or taking photos even um, otherwise this is a solid device 5000 milliampere hours battery it is really holding pretty long definitely get through the day even with 120 hertz enabled when it comes to video shooting i like it i like the new additions to the video pro app i like the quality i think it is on par with uh, all the other flagships right now so it's not like sony is like losing here using uh, yeah some older sensors or some at least only 12 megapixel sensors here so they are doing very very good here the only thing is like overheating it's the only big gripe that i have with this right now is over the overheating if the overheating warnings go away if the down sampling or down uh, yeah, frequency scaling to 60 hertz would go away then this could be really a recommendation because what you have like micro sd card slot you have three and a half millimeter headphone jack with good audio quality that you can get out of it you have a good camera you have stereo speaker setup you have a notification led you have so much good values in this phone. I think the only thing that is missing would be a mono mic on the back, just like my Xperia Pro I has. But everything else is pretty much like the best of the best, what everyone is wishing for, basically. And uh, yeah, it's a compact design. It's really easy to hold. I like this matte finish of the glass. I think they got it right finally. So no fingerprint smudges maybe because it's a white version <laughs> but anyway it's pretty pretty good uh, i have of course the style cover here directly on board um, made a video about it as well you saw it probably already because i uh, released it already and with the style cover uh, cover it feels a little bit more solid even um, 
and I can use it for video watching 4K HDR screen is looking very good it is brighter yes in automatic mode I noticed that it's getting brighter quickly and in direct sunshine I don't have the issue of not seeing stuff at least until it overheats because when it overheats of course it scrims uh, it dims the screen and it also it goes down in, in refresh rate so the biggest gripe is really the overheating issue right now um, everything else i could say first impression very very good uh, yeah, if sony would have a better processor or waited for the snapdragon 8 gen 1 plus or 8 gen plus one i don't know uh, that supposedly doesn't overheat so quickly this could be the smartphone of the year, I would say. But sadly, it is not right now. Hopefully, Sony will fix it. There's a software update that came out. I think all already testing, uh, tested in um, Asia. And if this fixes all the issues, I will yeah, keep you informed as well as doing some other videos on the Xperia 1, 1 Mark IV. I like doing this. And if you have some questions regarding the brand new Xperia 1 Mark IV, just write it down in the comment section. I can do some gaming tests, for example. Um, I will do camera reviews, of course, like I told you. And yeah, that's basically everything for this video. Until the next time, bye.